Okay, let's say you want to detect when a player breaks a block. This is Minecraft after all, and you should be able to know when a player is mining. However, really we don't have any options. You could create a scoreboard for every single block in the game and check if any of those scores have incremented on a player. But that is a lot of scores and a lot of checks. You could make an advancement trigger. And we have one that's tantalizingly close. It's the bee nest destroyed advancement trigger, but that only triggers for bee hives and bee nests. So the next best option you have is to modify every single loot table in the game, every block and mob loot table, all 1006 of them to drop a stick with some extra data on it. This data can tell you what the entity was, could tell you its UUID, what the block was, and with all that information you can know what entity broke a block and where that block was. And you heard me right, I know what entity broke a block, so I know if a creeper blew something up, or TNT blew something up, or the ever excellent to know if a skeleton broke a chorus flower. So that's exactly what I did. I made a utility data pack that I'm confident I'm the only person that's ever used because it's so obtuse and so annoying to use, but it is so useful. I really hope this thing gets obsolete as soon as possible because I hate maintaining this thing because I have to add a new loot table every time they add a new block. I have to edit tags and loot tables every time they add a new mob. But the utility of this pack is just so useful to what I do that I put up with it. So what exactly is this and how does it work? Well, this is just loot table shenanigans. And how it works is loot table shenanigans. I basically have a very large loot table that handles most of the data stuff. I copy the entity's UUID as well as figure out what its ID is based on a bunch of conditions. And that's really what makes this loot table so large. And then in every individual loot table, I have a function that writes the ID of the block that was broken into that output. And then every tick, I check for new entities in the world. And if that new entity is an item and it is a debug stick with the data that I expect from this system, then I can run the calls that you can interface with. And from those calls, you can get the context from the data that the loot tables output. Now I have been saying blocks mostly, but also entities drop this and give you a similar amount of information and allows you to detect when an entity kills another entity, which is probably a more useful use case for this in most cases, but in reality it was an implementation afterthought that I didn't put into the pack until I had finished most of the core of it. But in practice it functions in a basically identical manner to the block implementation. Now there are a couple of downsides to this whole thing. The <laughs> Can I help you? Now there are a couple of downsides to this whole thing. The primary one being the fact that it does override every loot table in the game. Meaning if you want to modify any loot table you have to implement the hooks that this data pack requires in order for it to continue functioning correctly. And the second one being something that's not exclusive to this system but just a general problem with block breaking detection is that nothing triggers when you break a block improperly. So if you break a stone block with your fist, there's no way to detect that without some annoying to implement methods. But yeah, that's been this thing that I really hope becomes obsolete sooner rather than later. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will catch y'all next time.